Hi everyone, thank you for joining us. Can we personally wish you a very happy Christmas with all that's going on. We know that it's going to be different this year, but we trust that you and your family will stay safe and most of all that you will know the nearness of the Lord and that you'll really experience the grace of God in a wonderful way at this time. I'm going to read from Matthew today, chapter 1, verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privily. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. John Newton had a remarkable conversion experience. He was a godless man, an infidel, a slave trader, a libertine, who opposed the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then in a remarkable way, God saved him. And he wrote those wonderful words, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But another great hymn that he wrote said these words, How sweet the name of Jesus sounds in a believer's ear. It soothes his sorrows, it heals his wounds, it drives away his fear. There's something wonderful about that name, Jesus. Thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You know the name Jesus just means Saviour. It's the New Testament counterpart of the Old Testament name Joshua, which indicates that salvation is of the Lord. Salvation is of the Lord. Jesus Christ is a Saviour. He's the Saviour. He is the only Saviour. Whenever God looked upon this world of sin, he did not send a politician, because the primary problem of of humanity is not political. He did not send an economist because the primary problem of humanity is not financial. He did not send an ecologist because the primary problem of our world is not ecological. He did not send an educationalist because the primary problem of our world is not educational. He sent a saviour. All men are in need of a saviour because all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And then after death, it's appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. And then if you're not ready, death and hell are cast into the lake of fire. Solemn things. We've all sinned. We're all going to die. We're all going to meet God. We cannot save ourselves, but God loved a world of sinners lost and ruined by the fall. Salvation full at highest cost, he offers free to all. God sent his son to be the saviour of the world. And the scripture says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there's none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. There's one saviour. He opened a way of salvation through his life and through the shedding of his blood upon the cross. He died in our room and in our place, took our guilt and sin and took responsibility for it and purged it away by the sacrifice of himself and then was buried and rose again and is alive forevermore. And this Christmas Eve of 2020, you can come to know him and trust him and receive him as your saviour. This is a time where many people give and exchange gifts, but why not receive Jesus Christ today as your personal saviour and have your sins forgiven and close out this old year in Christ and enter into the year to come in the will of God as a new creature. Will you trust Christ today? Many people at Christmas time, they forget that God sent his son to be the saviour of the world. Is he your saviour today? Trust him now. Thank you for listening. See you tomorrow.